How much do you know about black holes? What would happen if you fell into one? Say one day you were exploring space looking for a new planet for humans to inhabit, but came across a black hole and decided, eh, why not check it out? Would you have any chance of survival? How would you get out? Would there be a shortcut to another universe? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you fell into a black hole. Despite being black and a hole, a black hole is not a dark, empty space. In his theory of relativity, Einstein predicted how black holes are formed. When a massive star dies, it leaves a smaller, remnant core behind. If the core's mass is at least three times bigger than the mass of our sun, gravity overwhelms all other forces and turns the core into a black hole. But don't let its name fool you. A black hole isn't a hole at all, but rather a huge amount of matter packed into a very small space. Think of the sun with its gravitational field 28 times stronger than Earth's. If you were to walk on the sun, you'd be 28 times heavier than you are on Earth. Now, imagine squeezing four suns into something that's just 15 miles in diameter, the distance you can cover in a 30-minute drive. What would the gravity be like there? A black hole's gravity is so strong that even light can't get out. That's why you'll never see one, but you can detect it from the gamma ray bursts that the hole emits. These bursts, discovered by Stephen Hawking, now carry his name, Hawking Radiation. Stephen Hawking himself believed that black holes can be passages to another universe. So, if you were to fall into one, would you find yourself in an alternate dimension? Every black hole has an event horizon, the point at which gravitational pull becomes so strong you can't escape from it. The point of no return. If you found yourself outside of that point, you'd see that stars are twisted around a perfect circle of darkness. As you start being pulled toward a black hole, you'd be moving faster and faster, accelerated by the force of gravity. That's the first bad news for you, brave space traveler. The gravitational force of a black hole is very, very strong. If you fell feet first, your legs would be feeling a stronger gravitational pull than your head. Your body would be stretched apart. The most common black holes are called stellar. They can stretch about nine miles across and be as heavy as 20 suns. If you happen to be pulled towards a stellar black hole, you'd be completely torn apart before you even reach the event horizon. So make sure to choose a supermassive one, the one that's a million times heavier than our sun. In this case, your body would remain unharmed as you cross the event horizon, as the gravity would be pulling both your feet and your head with almost the same strength. And if you're wondering where to find one, you don't have to look too far. There's one right at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Luckily, it's 165 quadrillion miles away from us and will suck in neither the sun nor the planets. But don't pack your suitcase just yet. Crossing the event horizon is just the beginning of the challenge. There's a gravitational singularity at the center of the black hole where density becomes infinite. You'd be squashed into that center and become one with the black hole. You wouldn't be able to tell anyone about your experience. However, a person observing you from outside the event horizon would see a very different picture. As you were falling into a black hole, they'd see you slowing down, getting dimmer and redder. In the end, you'd just freeze, never crossing the event horizon. This is because space and time in a black hole swap their roles. At the event horizon, time comes to a standstill, while space, on the other hand, moves forward. You wouldn't be able to turn around and escape the black hole any more than you could travel back in time. Even when the black hole eventually died, emitting all the particles it had absorbed, including your body, it would be impossible to tell whether those particles were you. Stephen Hawking, however, found a way in which the information about your body wouldn't be lost. He theorized that there are alternative universes with different histories. This means, in one reality, you fell into a black hole. In the second one, there was no black hole. It's impossible to be certain, from outside of the event horizon, whether there's a black hole or not until you fall in there. If you cross the event horizon and there was a black hole, sayonara. But if you happen to be in a reality where the black hole didn't exist, you'd still be alive, just in a different universe. There would be no way for you to get back to ours. Would you dare explore the possibility? Could a black hole devour us all one day? There are millions of them out there, just waiting. And if we happened to make a black hole accidentally, well, you 
better fasten your seatbelts. Things are really going to suck. Literally. What would we see if we got pulled into a black hole? Could Earth orbit the Sun and a black hole? And would we survive spaghettification? This is what if, and here's what would happen if Earth were sucked into a black hole. Just 3,000 light years from Earth is a black hole visible to the naked eye. Thankfully, we're a safe distance from this stellar black hole and many others like it. There are approximately 100 million of them out there in our galaxy that we know of. They are remnants of supernovae, which occur when stars 10 to 20 times larger than our sun collapse in on themselves. Stellar black holes are fairly common and are about 16 kilometers in diameter. And then there's the much larger competition, supermassive black holes. These have a diameter roughly the size of our solar system and a mass greater than one million suns combined. One of them, known as Sagittarius A, is right smack dab in the middle of our galaxy. So how close would a black hole need to be to be a danger to us? Well, technically, a black hole the size of a one millimeter pin could destroy us if it was close enough to Earth due to its incredibly dense mass and extreme gravitational pull. Our survival all depends on whether we've surpassed the event horizon or not. You can think of this as the black hole's point of no return. Anything beyond this point would have to travel faster than light to escape. Yeah, good luck with that. If Earth got close enough, the side nearest to the black hole would begin stretching toward it. Our atmosphere would start to be vacuumed up and then huge chunks of the Earth would rip apart and follow suit. If Earth managed to fall into the orbit of the black hole, we'd experience tidal heating. The strong, uneven gravitational pull on Earth would continuously deform the planet. This would generate a tremendous amount of internal friction heating the Earth's core to disastrous levels. It would likely give rise to earthquakes, volcanoes, and deadly tsunamis. The trifecta of doom. Eventually, Earth would begin to stretch in a process known as spaghettification. And not in the tasty, cheesy, tomatoey way. Let's say you were a superhero and decided to fight the black hole head first. Well, your arms would be closer than your feet, causing your body to stretch out vertically and become more and more compressed. Let's hope your superpower is elasticity. For an average-sized stellar black hole, spaghettification can occur several hundred kilometers away from the event horizon. But for a supermassive black hole, physicists believe that this would happen inside the event horizon, due to its size. Eventually, no matter what size it is, anything entering a black hole would be ripped into a string of individual atoms. This would happen to anything that crosses it. People, planets, stars, you name it. Unfortunately, our whole solar system would be doomed. The careful balance of the Sun and our many planets would collapse, which could send them crashing into one another. And to add insult to injury, our asteroid belt would get sucked toward us. About 200 of the 552,894 asteroids we know of are more than 100 kilometers across. So if one hits us, we'd be dead before we would turn into spaghetti. Frankly, I'm not sure which fate would be worse. All of the matter in our solar system would join the accretion disk around the black hole. As matter gets sucked into the black hole, 
it generates massive amounts of radiation, so even if we somehow survived all the asteroids, we'd likely die from the radiation. Believe it or not, astronomers have discovered rare circumbinary planets that orbit two stars. While this may be a possibility with a, a black hole and our sun, the extreme tidal forces would likely make our planet uninhabitable. And worse yet, we might get kicked out of orbit or swallowed by the sun or the black hole eventually. Sorry, but there's not an outcome where we win here. Black holes are dark, matter-devouring balls of gravity. Most of them are so far away that we don't need to worry about them, but not this one. Meet Gaia BH1. This enormous black hole sits right outside our solar system. More specifically, 1,600 light years away from us. Now, that might sound like a huge distance, but it's way closer than any other black hole on record. What's worse, we didn't even know about it until now. Despite Gaia BH1 being 10 times more massive than our sun, we couldn't see it. Scientists usually discover these monstrosities by spotting the gas that a black hole feeds on. These hungry giants are called feeding black holes. Only Gaia BH1 isn't anything like that. This black hole is dormant. It hides in the darkness, patiently waiting for the galaxy to throw it some cosmic matter to feast on. But there's one thing that gave away Gaia's presence. You see, most star systems in the universe are binary. That means they have not one, but two stars orbiting each other. Our black hole neighbor is also part of a binary star system. Except, instead of two stars, this system has one star and one black hole. Yeah, Gaia BH1 was disguising itself as a star. But even though this monstrosity doesn't feed on any gas or matter yet, it still couldn't help but jiggle its star counterpart a little. Yeah, good try Gaia, but we still caught you. Out there in space, there are black holes a lot scarier than Gaia BH1. And some are so bizarre that they shouldn't even exist. A team of scientists discovered an unbelievable black hole and gave it the melodic name LB1. The weird thing about this black hole is that it's just too massive to be true. Okay, let's get some facts straight. We know of two types of black holes. Stellar black holes are what massive stars become when they die. They're everywhere in the universe. Even in our Milky Way galaxy, there could be as many as one billion of them lurking around. These beasts can be between 10 and 24 times as massive as our sun. The other type of black holes are supermassive ones. These enormities sit at the center of almost every galaxy, including our own. We don't really know how they form, but we do know that they're unimaginably gigantic, billions of times more massive than our sun. But LB1 doesn't fit either of these types. At 70 solar masses, it's too enormous to be a stellar black hole, yet it's too tiny to be a supermassive one. Scientists were scratching their heads trying to explain this phenomenon. Some theorized that it might not be a single black hole, but two black holes orbiting each other. Others guessed that LB1 was born of a gigantic star that was still in the middle of becoming a black hole. Well, the answer was simpler than we thought. LB1 isn't a black hole at all. It's an optical illusion caused by two rare stars orbiting each other. It's a unique star system to stargaze. 
But when scientists said they found an improbable black hole, well, they were wrong. But please, how could you blame them? It's pretty hard to study an object 15,000 light years away. Mistakes happen. The good news is that LB1 didn't upend our understanding of black holes after all. Now, that doesn't mean that black holes can't blow your mind. Remember the one at the center of the Milky Way? Yeah, it's called Sagittarius A star, and it's as massive as four and a half million suns. But there's always a bigger fish in the universe. Sagittarius A star might be the most massive monster lurking in our galaxy, but it's not even close to some of the really big players out there. Like Tun 618? This black hole is devouring matter 10 billion light years away from us. It's as bright as 140 trillion suns. So bright that it outshines its own galaxy. And its mass? Yeah, 66 billion times that of our sun. Yeah, that's right, 66 billion. Tun 618 is horrifyingly big. When scientists discovered it, they began to wonder if even more massive black holes were possible. Of course, the name supermassive wouldn't do bigger black holes any justice, so astronomers came up with a cool name for them too. Stupendously large black holes, or slabs. Yeah, and then they found one. Move over, Tun 618, there's a new gargantuan black hole in town. This stupendously large monstrosity sits at the center of Phoenix A galaxy, around eight and a half billion light years away from us. It's almost impossible to imagine how enormous this thing is. Scientists think it has a mass of 100 billion suns. That's more massive than some galaxies out there. And it won't stop growing. The event horizon of this black hole at the center of Phoenix A is unimaginably huge too. It has a diameter of about 100 times the distance between the Sun and Pluto. If you jumped on a SpaceX Starship and tried to fly across this black hole, it would take you 2,500 years to complete that journey. Yeah, we're lucky that this monstrous slab is so far away from us that we don't have to worry about it swallowing our solar system whole. But there are two more supermassive black holes very close to Earth. And they're on a collision course with each other. Okay, when I say very close to Earth, I mean... 500 million light years away from us, but still closer than a lot of the other scary things out there. Seriously though, we don't know what exactly happens when two supermassive black holes collide. We've never observed a full merger of supermassive giants. Scientists think that they'll dance around each other for about 200 million years before finally becoming one. But this would be a violent marriage. As the black holes spiral together, they'll send enormous gravitational waves through space. Waves so big that we'll be able to detect them from our planetary neighborhood. But that's not the scary part. Mergers like that happen all the time, and right now, the Milky Way is on a collision course with the Andromeda Galaxy. When our two galaxies become one, what will happen to the supermassive black holes at their centers? Black holes are one of the most devastating objects in space, sucking up everything around them. But there's another space phenomenon that's just as destructive. And it's known as a white hole. Now, what would happen if these two objects met in space and fought each other? Could something like this even happen? Who would win? 
And what is a white hole anyway? This is what if, and here's what would happen if a white hole fought a black hole. Before we get to our fight, let's see what these two opponents are all about. In one corner of space, we have the black hole. This legendary space occurrence is probably pretty familiar to you. Its signature move is to consume every piece of matter it comes in contact with. The white hole? You're probably less familiar with. And its signature move is to expel energy rather than sucking it in. So with our two fighters having completely opposite attack strategies, who would win? Despite us not knowing much about our white hole mystery opponent, it's much more experienced at conquering space than the black hole is. That's right, the white hole is a proper journeyman and has been roaming space for millions of years, kicking butt and taking names. That's because scientists theorize that this white hole used to be a black hole. Scientists suspect that after millions of years, black holes will become white holes. And all the energy and matter they consumed over the years will be expelled back into space. That being said, when a black hole becomes a white hole, it might not last very long, so it will need to act quickly if it wants to pick a fight with a black hole. And despite it being different, the white hole is just as destructive as a black hole, if not more so. The matter the white hole is ejecting moves at the speed of light. So it's safe to say that the white hole is the veteran fighter in this situation as opposed to this up and coming black hole, but how much will its experience help it? After millions of years of causing destruction throughout the universe, our two opponents finally meet. They've battled asteroids, planets, and even stars, but they always managed to survive. Now they both face their greatest opponent yet. As these two massive forces approach each other, the black hole will instantly gain the advantage. The white hole will do its best to prevent the black hole from overtaking it, but unfortunately, it really doesn't stand a chance. That's because the white hole has no choice but to spit energy at its opponent. Although it was able to defend itself against everything else in the universe, unfortunately, the black hole is its one true match. The mass the white hole is expelling is also being turned into energy for the black hole. This won't be a quick battle either as the black hole can feed on the white hole for thousands of years. And as it keeps feeding, the black hole is getting larger and larger. And now the black hole is ready for the finishing blow. It completely swallows the white hole. Now that it's consumed so much energy, our black hole is more massive than ever. It might be as big as the Messier 87, which is 38 billion kilometers across. For reference, that's three million times larger than Earth. So, if a white hole and a black hole collided, we'd have a massive black hole roaming around the universe, destroying everything in its path. It's invisible, deadly, and sucking up every bit of matter in its path. The most massive black hole in the known universe is headed right toward Earth. What would you see as it started to slurp up the Milky Way galaxy? What kind of tasty dish would Earth become? And when it's finished with us, where would it go next? This is What If? And here's what would happen if the largest black hole entered our solar system. Black holes aren't that much different from any other object in the universe that has mass. Except that they are really, really dense. 
At their center is a singularity, an infinitely small point where all its matter is compressed. The more matter that's condensed into this singularity, the stronger the gravitational pull. Most black holes are the remnants of massive stars and generally range between 10 to 100 solar masses. For the record, one solar mass is the equivalent of 333,000 Earths. That's a lot of gravity. But supermassive black holes, which lurk at the centers of many galaxies, could contain millions or billions of solar masses. And scientists think that there are black holes as large as 100 billion solar masses, aka stupendously large black holes, or slabs. Catch one of these moving toward our solar system and get ready to wave bye-bye to all your conceptions of space and time. The largest known black hole, Tun 618, has begun its long trek directly toward our solar system, with its 66 billion solar masses in tow. And long trek is no overstatement. It would be traveling at least 10 billion light years to reach us. As it steamrolled through space, it would gobble every bit of dust and gas in its path. It would also snack on many stars before it even reaches the Milky Way. Depending on its route, this could mean hundreds of billions of stars added to its size. Before making first contact with our galaxy, it would have pulled in enough matter to disrupt its neatly organized spiral you'd be able to detect its initial approach toward us as you observe the increasingly intense radiation it emits. Eventually, it would come bearing down on the last of the Milky Way's spiral arms, the Orion Arm. Tun 618 would gobble up its entire 20,000 light year length. It would be like an unbelievably long buffet line straight to the center of our galaxy. Somewhere along this line, it would finally knock on our front door. The Oort cloud is a spherical shell of icy debris that surrounds the solar system. Or at least it was before Tun 618 showed up. It would then continue on its way and consume the Kuiper Belt, just beyond the orbit of Neptune. The danger to Earth would steadily increase as hundreds of thousands of icy bodies would be sent hurtling this way. As Tun 618 kept pushing forward, it would devour the ice giants Neptune and Uranus, and the gas giants Saturn and Jupiter would be pulled apart atom by atom. Not only the planets, but their moons and every asteroid that the giant black hole comes across. Any future plans by us to settle on Mars would be squashed as the red planet would end up right smack in the middle of this black hole too. And now there would be nothing left in the way of Tun 618 and Earth. Now, while the center of this stupendously large black hole would be almost 295 billion kilometers away, we'd finally be right up against its event horizon. That's the boundary marking a black hole's point of no return. The pull of its gravity would now be totally inescapable. Our whole planet would stretch out while simultaneously getting more and more compressed. Eventually, Earth would become like a strand of spaghetti slurped into an empty black void. Then this black hole monstrosity would gobble up the sun in one big gulp. And now, at the center of what was once our solar system, Tun 618 would occupy nearly as much space. It would extend almost all the way to the inner edges of what used to be the Oort cloud. And since it's not polite to leave any food on your plate, Tun 618 would continue on its path toward the black hole at the center of the Milky Way, Sagittarius A star. As these two massive black holes collide, 
The collision would be so powerful that it could cause ripples in the very fabric of space-time. It's almost as old as the universe and as massive as 34 billion suns. It eats stars for breakfast. And now it's about to consume ours. Behold, the great and powerful black hole with the catchy name J2157. If it came close enough to our solar system, how fast would it destroy us? How would it all go sideways for our sun? And how exactly would this monstrous black hole end all life on Earth? This is what if, and here's what would happen if a black hole swallowed the sun. Black holes are scary enough. They form when big stars explode in a supernova and then collapse in on themselves. The most common black holes, the stellar ones, are only 16 kilometers in diameter, but they have the mass of a star at least 10 times more massive than our sun crammed in them. All that mass compressed into such a small diameter makes black holes extremely dense. If you came too close to a black hole's vicinity, beyond its event horizon, its extreme gravitational pull would turn you into a spaghetti noodle. But there are black holes so massive that they make stellar black holes look feather light. These are called supermassive black holes. These monstrosities lurk at the centers of galaxies and take up space roughly the size of our solar system. But most of them don't even get close to the size of black hole J2157. J2157 is the fastest growing black hole in the known universe. And it's the second largest one. Its event horizon has a radius of 670 astronomical units, which is comparable to the distance between the Sun and Neptune multiplied by 22. Whoa! If that's not scary enough, J2157 holds the title of the hungriest black hole we know. To stay in good shape, it gobbles up matter at a rate of about one sun per day. Now, take this monstrosity and bring it closer to our solar system. You can imagine how that would play out. If J2157 could replace the supermassive black hole that sits at the center of our Milky Way galaxy, to us on Earth, it would look 10 times brighter than the full moon. That's because of its incredibly large accretion disk, the matter the black hole collected on its way to us. And because it always needs to be the center of attention, this monstrous black hole would outshine most of the stars in the sky. If a black hole under 100 million masses of our sun entered our solar system, it wouldn't swallow the sun in one go it would gradually start pulling matter from our star until all that's left of it would be a cloud of gas. In that case, you could expect lethal amounts of cosmic radiation headed toward the Earth. But that's not how J2157 likes to deal with things. A black hole of that size and mass would devour the sun in a moment. But losing the sun would be the least of our problems. Our planet could be torn apart by the tidal forces from the black hole consuming our sun. Or it could be bombarded with an unthinkable amount of cosmic radiation. Or it would disappear into the black hole's event horizon, along with the rest of the solar system. Either way, you wouldn't get out of this alive. But 
no matter how big and scary J2157 is, remember that it sits at a safe distance of 12 and a half billion light years away from us. I'd say we're pretty safe here. How did we get here? Let's roll back a few days. This is CERN, the nuclear research laboratory on the border of France and Switzerland. It features the most powerful particle accelerator on Earth, the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. What does it do? Well, it accelerates and collides particles at 99.99% the speed of light. And maybe it could produce the very first lab-grown black hole. How big would that black hole be? What precautions would you need to take not to get sucked in? And how long would it take to destroy the entire planet? This is what if, and here's what would happen if a black hole opened at CERN. Ah, black holes. Gravitational matter devouring monsters traveling across the universe on their own terms. Some of them are so big they could gobble up the sun in a day. Could scientists create one of those at CERN? Theoretically, yes. But could a lab-made black hole be the end of Earth? Let's see. The LHC is a 27-kilometer ring of superconducting magnets. Inside, it accelerates particles to move at almost the speed of light. These particles are bound to collide, and when they do, they produce enough energy to create new particles. We're talking about very small amounts of energy here. The numbers are so tiny that scientists came up with a new unit of energy to measure particle energies at that scale. It's called the Tera Electron Volt. 14 Tera Electron Volts give you new particles. One followed by 19 zeros of Tera Electron Volts would give you a black hole. Already picturing doomsday scenarios? That's very much in the spirit of what if, but that's not how it would go down. If one of the experiments at the LHC ended with scientists creating a black hole, that black hole would be microscopic, as in quantum level small. It would have a mass about 40 million times smaller than the E. coli bacterium. It wouldn't get out of the accelerator and rampage across the planet, chewing up everything in its way. Well, it could get out, but because of its laughably small gravitational pull, it wouldn't attract a single piece of matter. The black hole would lose its energy through what's known as Hawking radiation long before it could gain any substantial mass, as if it never existed in the first place. Even when folks at CERN build a next-generation lab, the future circular collider that will outpower the Large Hadron Collider will still be pretty safe. For a lab-produced black hole to potentially cause any damage, it would need to have a mass of at least 0.00002 grams. That's about 50 times smaller than the mass of an ant. It would take that black hole nine octillion years to reach the size of one kilogram, and another decillion years to swallow up the Earth. The whole process would take longer than the age of the universe. I'd say no need to worry about it at all. The Earth doesn't get destroyed every time physicists do something cool, unfortunately. What would happen if our planet got too close to a black hole? 
Well, according to science fiction, we'd be sucked into a parallel universe. Or maybe even the future. But in reality, it wouldn't be nearly that fun. Instead, our planet would be ripped apart piece by piece, starting with our atmosphere. So what if we moved a little further back? Instead of the black hole being right beside us, we move it to the center of our solar system. Would our planet still be destroyed? And what would that do to our solar system as a whole? This is what if, and here's what would happen if the solar system orbited a black hole. This black hole has the same mass as our sun. If we were to place it next to our sun, the two objects would orbit each other at a close distance, about one-tenth the distance between Earth and the sun. This would mean that our solar system was now orbiting a local point with twice the mass of the sun. As a result, the planets would have to orbit faster to avoid getting pulled inwards. A year on Earth would decrease from 365 days to 258 days, and the amount of energy from the sun would vary as it orbited closer to and farther away from Earth. Other than that, life would pretty well be the same. But what if we replaced our sun with a black hole completely? Well, we'd have a lot more to worry about than just the length of a year, which, by the way, would be over in the blink of an eye. The biggest problem we would face if we replaced the sun with a black hole would be the absence of incoming solar energy. The planet Earth would go completely dark. Thanks to our planet's infamous greenhouse gas effect, the global temperature wouldn't be reduced instantaneously. But after the first week, Earth's average surface temperature would drop to zero degrees, and then to negative 101 degrees by the end of the first year. You'd think that our planet quickly becoming an ice world would be bad enough, but we're just getting started. Without sunlight, there would be no photosynthesis, the process by which all plants generate food. Small plants would die in a matter of days. This would create a ripple effect throughout the entire food chain, causing us all to starve to death eventually. But maybe there is a way we can get usable energy from a black hole. And it all starts with something called CMB. CMB, also known as Cosmic Microwave Background, is the weak radiation left over from the Big Bang. Theoretically, if a black hole spins fast enough, it can compress the CMB radiation into optical wavelengths, the same wavelengths that are emitted by the sun. The wavelengths would funnel into a narrow beam and before you know it, our planet would have usable energy once again. All right. But there is a small catch. The faster rotation of the black hole would also pull the planetary orbits in closer to the point of no escape. For the planetary orbits to remain stable and avoid being sucked up, the orbital velocity of the planets would need to be close to the speed of light. This means that a year on Earth would be over before the blink of an eye. So much for your big New Year's Eve party. But there's no time to worry about that because we've got bigger issues coming our way. If any material like meteors, satellites, or space debris gets sucked into the black hole, it will result in a blast of radiation coming our way. And when the radiation arrives at our planet, it will blow away our atmosphere, killing anything in its path. So even though the sun can be annoying sometimes, when it comes to things to orbit around, we could do a lot worse. The next time you look up at a sunny sky, don't take it for granted. It will disappear one day. 
a black hole is on a collision course with our sun. And there's nothing left for you to do except sit back and watch the destruction of our entire solar system. How exactly would this epic collision unfold? How would this black hole end up in our planetary neighborhood? And what would it be like to witness all this from Earth? This is What If, and here's what would happen if the Sun collided with a black hole. A black hole is not much different than any other object that has mass, except it's dense, really dense. All the matter it possesses is compressed to an infinitely small point at its center, called a singularity. Most black holes are the remnants of massive stars. And just like the stars they used to be, black holes have a strong gravitational pull. The more matter compressed into its singularity, the stronger the gravity. There could be as many as 40 quintillion black holes in the observable universe. Many are located at the centers of their galaxies, like Sagittarius A star, the closest known black hole to us. It resides right in the center of the Milky Way. But black holes could also go rogue. After an extreme event, like a collision between two galaxies, a black hole can break free and start to wander. There could be 12 of these rogue black holes in our galaxy alone. And one could be headed toward the sun right now. If a wandering black hole were headed toward our solar system, it would first reach the Oort cloud. That's the sphere of icy objects surrounding the solar system, two light years away from us. As soon as a black hole came too close, the icy bodies in this region would be ejected from their orbits. You wouldn't be able to see the black hole for yourself until it reached the ice giants, Neptune and Uranus. Looking through a powerful telescope, you could see the gases being pulled away from these planets. All the gases and dust torn from Neptune and Uranus would form a region around the black hole known as an accretion disk. This superheated collection of gas and dust would orbit the black hole making it visible. As it continued on its destructive path, you'd witness Jupiter and Saturn meet a similar fate. You'd be able to see with your own naked eye these gas giants disappearing from our night sky. Rocky inner planets like Mars, Venus, and Mercury would also be sucked into the black hole and destroyed into nothingness as you watched in horror. Only Earth would be spared. Uh, not really, of course. I just wouldn't want you to miss out on your front row ticket to the destruction of the solar system. As the black hole approached our sun, you might think it would swallow it in one blazing gulp. No, instead, the strong gravitational pull would begin to pull matter from the sun just like a strand being pulled from a ball of yarn. Huge portions of gas would be ripped away from it, and they would spin around the black hole, joining the accretion disk formed by the gas and dust of all our neighboring planets. This tearing apart of the sun would keep going until our star no longer existed. What's left behind would be nothing more than a gas cloud, only the very end of the tail of this cloud might be able to escape the fate of being pulled into the black hole. As the sun's matter was being absorbed, lethal amounts of ultraviolet and X-ray radiation would be released in fiery explosions. This radiation would be hurled right in your direction back on Earth. You wouldn't know the ultimate fate of the sun for eight minutes. That's how long the light would take to reach us, but 
instead of the light source of our solar system disappearing entirely right away, the black hole itself could become extremely bright. Possibly trillions of times brighter than the sun. And with the sun swallowed up, the stability of what's left in our solar system would be completely destroyed. An entirely new gravitational balance would need to be established. And in addition to all the lethal radiation raining down on Earth, extreme tidal forces would push and pull at the planet. This would cause massive earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis. Eventually, Earth would crack into pieces. Or maybe in the best case scenario, unceremoniously ejected from the solar system. They're massive and extremely dense. They rip apart anything and everything that gets close to them. We can't see black holes, but we know they have the destructive power to wipe everything out of existence. This is what if, and here's what would happen if a black hole deleted the universe. Before we get to the part where a black hole erases the universe, let's make something clear. The universe is a giant supercomputer processing information. Without information, there can be no universe. But what is information? In physics, information is the property of a specific state of a particle. I know, it sounds confusing. Here's a simpler way of looking at it. This is a carbon atom. A bunch of these can be arranged to make a hard diamond. But if you change the arrangement of atoms, you can get soft graphite. The basic building blocks are the same, it's information that makes them different. In quantum mechanics, information is like energy. It can't disappear into nothingness. So how, in the universe, can one black hole do the impossible? That's the black hole information paradox. Black holes act like monstrous cosmic trash compactors. They squeeze stars, planets and unfortunate astronauts who cross the event horizon into a microscopic point. So what happens to the information about every particle that a black hole consumes? Since information can never be destroyed, it has to be stored somewhere inside that black hole, right? Our original understanding of black holes assumed that everything that disappeared in the black hole stayed in the black hole. The moment an object passed the event horizon, it got crushed into the density of the black hole. The information about it could never be retrieved again. That's what we thought before Stephen Hawking introduced Hawking radiation. Hawking realized that black holes aren't static. Rather, they release their mass and energy back into the universe, particle by particle, until there's nothing left. So does that mean the information within a black hole can somehow escape with the black hole's outgoing radiation? Not quite. The black hole doesn't preserve the information it consumes. It chaotically mixes it together with other bits of information, making it impossible to recover. The information is lost forever. If the information can be lost, that would mean that black holes can eventually delete the universe forever. But there is a possibility that the black hole doesn't delete the information. It may be hiding it in a baby universe, a small self-contained part of the universe that branched off of ours. The information wouldn't technically be lost, but we wouldn't be able to interact with it. Another possibility is that black holes can encode the information according to the holographic principle. If you were to get trapped inside a black hole, you'd still experience three-dimensional space. For us, looking at you from the outside, you'd appear stretched on the flat surface, just like a hologram. That would mean that the information paradox is resolved, and we don't need to rewrite the laws of physics. But we'd have to rethink our understanding of reality. The universe could be a three-dimensional image projected off a two-dimensional surface. And you may be a hologram on the surface of a black hole. And the best part? The black hole couldn't delete the universe after all. Black holes are dense and scary. They suck up everything in their way. 
Their gravity is so strong it bends light and warps time. But what if I told you we might have been wrong about these cosmic vacuum cleaners? Well, for one, they're not vacuum cleaners at all. Uh-uh, black holes don't go around gobbling up everything in their vicinity. You'd have to cross a black hole's event horizon to get sucked into one. The event horizon is the area around a black hole where its gravity is so strong that you'd have to move at the speed of light to escape it. And moving that fast is simply impossible, at least according to Einstein. That's why there's no escape after you cross this line. The extreme gravity would pull you in and then you disappear into the blackness of a black hole. Forever. But as long as you stayed on the safe side of the event horizon, you'd be completely fine. Now, if you had a bad day and ended up sucked into a black hole, it might not be as violent as you think. Despite a black hole's unimaginably massive gravity, it wouldn't instantly crush you like a can of soda. No, you'd experience something that scientists call spaghettification. It's when a black hole stretches you into the shape of, well, spaghetti. If you were approaching a black hole feet first, your legs would get long and skinny before your head started to change shape. Once you crossed the event horizon, the stretching you'd experience would be extreme and painful. The black hole wouldn't crush you. Instead, it would rip your molecules apart. This whole spaghettification process would only take a few seconds, maybe a few minutes tops. Sorry, did I say it wouldn't be violent? Yeah, I take that back. This would really hurt. But the good news is you could still make a comeback. Just not in the same form as you entered the black hole. Yeah, you may have heard that nothing escapes a black hole, but that isn't exactly true. All thanks to Hawking radiation. Turns out, black holes have an interesting quantum phenomenon going on. At the very edge of a black hole's event horizon, particles are constantly forming. Some of them fall back into the black hole, but others escape this monstrosity's gravity in the form of radiation. Hawking radiation, to be specific. Over time, so many particles escape a black hole's event horizon that the black hole disappears entirely, like it never even existed. But it takes an incredibly long time for a black hole to evaporate like this. And unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to reassemble yourself from all those emitted particles. So I really wouldn't recommend jumping into a black hole. Especially not into a supermassive black hole in the middle of our galaxy. You see, there are different types of black holes. The most common ones are stellar black holes. They are the remnants of stars at least 20 times more massive than our sun. And because they're so dense, well, their event horizons can be several kilometers in diameter. Supermassive black holes are monstrous, unimaginably big. The most massive black hole scientists have spotted so far is located in the middle of Phoenix A galaxy. It's got a mass of 100 billion suns. Yeah, billion with a B. At this point, it's not just a supermassive black hole, it's a stupendously large black hole, or slab. Until recently, scientists thought the biggest supermassive giant was Tun 618 a black hole with 66 billion solar masses. But there's so much of the cosmos we haven't discovered yet, and maybe supermassive black holes can be much, much more massive than we could ever imagine. Scientists still don't know exactly how these cosmic monstrosities form, and we've got no idea what happens when two of them collide, but it sure wouldn't be pretty for anything caught in between them. But at least we can still observe them to find out more. A black hole's gravity is so intense that even light can't escape it, but 
That doesn't mean they're the stealthy ninjas of the cosmos. They're very much visible, just not in the way you might think. Because their gravitational pull affects stars around them, astronomers can detect their gravitational effects. They can also see X-rays when something big falls into a black hole. That's because when matter is pulled to the point of no return, it heats up to intense temperatures. But the most mysterious thing about black holes is what lies on the other side? There are theories that black holes can be gateways to other universes. A black hole might be connected to another point in space and time through what's known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge. It's a type of wormhole, and a very unstable one. Now, scientists haven't found proof of that yet, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. What if we could use black holes as cosmic subways? Where could they take us? Could it be another reality? Another time? Well, while all of this is fun to think about, there's one big problem. Einstein-Rosen bridges are incredibly unstable. They could collapse on you at any moment, trapping you inside a black hole before you could reach your mysterious destination. And even if we were lucky enough to pass through that bridge before it collapsed, there's still no way you could survive it. The intense gravity and radiation would likely destroy you long before you popped out on the other side. Maybe one day we'll learn to travel through black holes, but for now, it's best to stick to exploring our own solar system. What would happen if you took the most energetic light source in the universe and smashed it into a massive gravitational monster? Well, you might reverse the flow of time. How would this event unfold? How could it affect time as we know it? And what would happen if you got too close? This is what if, and here's what would happen if a gamma ray burst hit a black hole. Meet your first fighter, a black hole. Not so different than your average object with mass, except that it's extremely dense. Most black holes are the remnants of massive stars, and they have lots of gravity. The mass of this black hole is compressed to a point called a singularity. At this infinitely small point in the center, conceptions of space and time break down. Today's challenger is a gamma ray burst. Not so different from your average burst of visible light. Oh yeah, except way more energetic. Gamma ray bursts are the strongest and brightest explosions in the universe. In one second, gamma ray bursts emit as much energy as the sun will emit during its entire 10 billion year lifespan. So if these two powerful phenomena collide, would space and time cease to exist? There are a couple of things you should know before we get underway with our space-time obliterating cage match. The first is that our two contenders already interact pretty often. A black hole releases a burst of gamma ray light when it's created. This burst spreads out evenly in all directions across the universe. So some of these gamma rays will certainly encounter another black hole or two. And these gamma ray bursts happen about once a day. They could flash for less than two seconds or they could last for up to 30 seconds. The difference is whether the burst results from two neutron stars colliding to form a black hole or whether it's the result of a star collapsing directly into a black hole without a supernova explosion. So, if you managed to observe these phenomena, would you witness a magnificent explosion about 
a million trillion times brighter than the sun? Well, not quite. While some photons have just the right amount of frequency to be visible to your eyes, the frequency of gamma rays is way too high. Your eyes aren't advanced enough to see their beautiful bursts. But if you could see them, this insane amount of light would probably leave you blind. Now, surely this explosion must be loud, right? Well, once again, I come bearing bad news. It would technically sound like nothing. Yeah, sound doesn't travel in the vacuum of space. It needs a medium with particles to carry sound waves. But thanks to the scientists at NASA, a gamma ray burst would sound a little something like this. Okay, not exactly like this. These beautiful cello and piano notes translate the gamma ray frequencies into musical notes. Pretty mellow for such a massive explosion, right? But if you were close to this explosion, things would be anything but mellow for you. Gamma rays are hazardous. They can penetrate lead, concrete, and certainly whatever spacesuit you'd be wearing. As they pass through your body, they deliver an extremely high dosage of radiation. You'd suffer radiation sickness. You'd become nauseous, lose your hair, and even bleed. The energy could cause damage to your tissue and your DNA, leading to cancer or, worse, death. The gamma rays could cook you from the inside out. So you'd want to back up a little bit. Or better yet, reverse time. In 2018, researchers observing gamma ray burst pulses found that some events repeated themselves in reverse. That's right, it was as if they were moving backward. So what does this mean for you? Did you just stumble on a way to travel back in time? Again, I have bad news. This is merely an optical phenomenon. Light has the fastest speed in the universe, but this is only true for the speed of light traveling through empty space. In other mediums, like water, it would be possible for electrons to travel faster. That means if gamma rays could travel faster than the speed of light, they would give the illusion of reversing time. So yeah, it's possible I oversold you a bit on the idea that if a gamma ray burst collided with a black hole, it would result in the brightest, loudest, time-destroying explosion of all time. But in some ways, it's all true. Now, until our sun collapses into a black hole and sends a burst of gamma rays in your direction, you don't have to worry. Welcome to the Void. Black holes remain the most mysterious and destructive force in our universe. And when one explodes, the devastation permanently changes the structure of the universe. But what if not one, but all the black holes in the universe suddenly exploded? Would you die instantly? Or would gravity suck you in? And how could you use this cosmic event to book yourself a journey in time? This is what if, and here's what would happen if every black hole suddenly exploded. In 2016, astronomers discovered the remnants of an explosion from a supermassive black hole almost 400 light years from Earth. The event ripped through space and created a cosmic crater wide enough for 18 Milky Way galaxies to fit inside. This one blast ripped apart the Ophiuchus galaxy cluster 
and raged for over 100 million years. But what did it take to ignite its fuse? A black hole, which is the remains of a dead star, contains a large concentration of matter squeezed into a tiny area. And its gravitational field becomes so strong that all matter and even light gets sucked into its vortex. The Milky Way galaxy alone contains over 400 million black holes. Yeah, in the center of our home galaxy, there's a supermassive black hole over 4 million solar masses wide. And studies have found that most galaxies have these gravitational monsters at their core. These supermassive black holes, like the one in our backyard, can expand to billions of times the size of the sun. So is our galaxy a ticking time bomb? Now, speaking of black holes, 1% of these giants has a swirling mass of gas and dust called an accretion disk. The orbiting debris from this disk falls inside the black hole and shoots out at nearly the speed of light. Guided by twisted magnetic fields, the metals and radiation would burn brightly and return to the cosmos. Debris from the accretion disk endlessly feeds this giant singularity. But what would it take for this behemoth to explode? The black hole would have to take in over 300 million solar masses of gas to create an explosion greater than the one that tore apart the Ophiuchus cluster. And the amount of gas it displaced would equal several trillion suns. Across the universe, the blast would rip galaxies apart and destroy planets. And depending on the amount of gas it took in, the explosion could continue for hundreds of millions of years. Unfortunately for planet Earth, we lay right in the path of a jet stream from Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole in the Milky Way. Super hot particles ejected from the black hole would slam into our planet along with lethal levels of radiation. Once the X-ray and gamma-ray photons reached Earth, they would destroy the ozone layer within months. With this protective layer gone, how long would it take for the radiation to fry the planet? It would take over 1,000 years for those gamma rays to hit our planet if the closest black hole, HR 6819, exploded. So while we might see several hundred new bright spots in the sky, it would take a millennium before our planet would feel its effects. I mean, if we're still around. This cataclysmic event wouldn't destroy the entire universe, just large parts of it. But the same materials left behind from the blast would create the seeds for new life. Over hundreds of billions of years, these particles could become new stars galaxies, or even life. On Earth, time near the edge of the black hole would appear to last billions of years. And near the border of the singularity, an object would seem to hover there endlessly. It's time for one of the biggest battles our solar system has ever seen. In this corner, a gas giant and heavyweight Jupiter. And in this corner, an infinitely small but truly terrifying black hole. What would happen to these rivals as they hurtled toward each other? Why would this event cause Earth to be bombarded by asteroids? And would it be game over for our solar system? This is What If? And here's what would happen if Jupiter collided with a black hole. Okay, before the fight, let's take a quick look at exactly what each contender is up against. Starting with our solar system's favorite. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the Sun. 
located about 740 million kilometers from it. This gas giant is the largest planet too. It's about 318 times more massive than Earth and twice as massive as all the other planets in our neighborhood combined. But looks can be deceiving. Compared to its opponent, the heavyweight Jupiter isn't all that heavy. Stellar black holes are a lot smaller than our gas giant, but they sure can pack a punch. The thing about black holes is that they are dense, incredibly dense. All of their matter is contained within an infinitely small point known as a singularity. And inside this tiny region, all concepts of time and space fall apart. And like any object with mass, black holes have gravity. A lot of gravity. Most black holes are remnants of massive stars. They're called stellar black holes, and they range from 3 to 10 solar masses. But because they're so dense, if a black hole with 10 times the mass of our sun appeared in our solar system, it would only be 60 kilometers across. So would our gas giant Jupiter stand a chance to defeat its tiny but immensely powerful contender? Or would it just be another object lost inside the black hole's point of no return? Everything in the universe is moving through space at breakneck speed, and naturally that includes the Sun and the rest of our solar system. We're whizzing across the cosmos at about 720,000 kilometers an hour. And in this galactic dance, another star may come close enough to us to influence the outer regions of our solar system. Or worse, we might run into one of the nearly one billion black holes rampaging around the Milky Way galaxy. Of course, the chances of this happening are slim. The closest star in our neighborhood is over four light years away, and that's far. Scientists think that there's only a 1% chance that another star will ever come close enough to disrupt the edges of our solar system. The chances of a rogue star coming close enough to mess with Jupiter are even lower. But it could happen. At first, as this stealthy force of destruction swung toward us, the black hole would disrupt the Oort cloud. This area surrounds our solar system like a giant spherical shell, and it's filled with icy objects. But these mountain-sized ice cubes would be no match for a black hole. As they were pulled along for the ride with this small but massive monstrosity, this would be the first sign that an epic collision with Jupiter was unavoidable. The gravitational intruder would continue through the next region, the Kuiper Belt, and it would wreak havoc along the way. Many of the icy objects here, including the dwarf planet Pluto, would be ejected from their orbits. Things would suddenly get more serious for Earth as many of these objects would now be on a deadly collision course with us. As it passed Neptune, Uranus, and Saturn, the black hole would tear away their gases. These gases would form an accretion disk of superheated gas and dust around the gravitational intruder. And if the black hole came too close to any of these planets, they could also be at risk of being ejected from their orbits. Then the black hole would finally bear down on Jupiter. And right away, the gas giant would experience a similar attack on its atmosphere. The black hole would pull away hydrogen and helium gases like yarn from a yarn ball. Eventually, the entire planet would be pulled toward the black hole. It would be an unfair fight from the get-go. Jupiter wouldn't even be able to get a punch in, and if all this isn't violent enough, just wait. As this dense and hungry monster chowed down on Jupiter's abundance of gas, 
It would also release an explosive wave of UV and X-rays in all directions. Yeah, it would be like one big supermassive burp packed with deadly radiation. This radiation would hurtle toward us on Earth. In less than an hour, lethal amounts of radioactive material would rain down on us. But on the bright side, you'd finally be able to see the black hole up in the sky. Whatever stability we enjoy in our solar system would be gone. The black hole would be swallowing up everything in sight, including our planet. Now, if we somehow managed to be spared the full brunt of the black hole's destructive forces, well, without Jupiter, our solar system would need to find a new gravitational balance. Yeah, Jupiter had a special place in our neighborhood. Its enormous gravity kept asteroids and comets from pummeling us and other inner planets of our neighborhood. It also helped Earth maintain its nearly circular orbit around the Sun. So even if we survived all the gravitational havoc from a rogue black hole, without Jupiter, this little space rock we call home wouldn't last long. This star is about to transform into a black hole. And we're about to travel inside it to see what's on the other side. The only problem is that we'll never be able to report our findings back to Earth. Because once you go inside a black hole, there's no coming back. So maybe there's a better way to find out what's on the other side. Could we use a special telescope? How would light behave inside a black hole? And why could the first image of a black hole provide all the answers? This is what if, and here's what would happen if we could see through a black hole. Everything that we can see in the world around us is based on light entering our eyes. If an object doesn't emit or reflect light, then our eyes can't see it. So how are we supposed to see through to the other side of a black hole? It's like the darkest thing we've ever discovered. Not only does it not emit its own light, it also sucks up any light that comes near it. But according to planetary scientist Joshua Colwell, seeing through a black hole is not impossible. In fact, we've already done it. And all it took was a little bending of space and time. Let's take a look at the first real image of a black hole. Even in this low quality picture, you can see through to the other side if you look close enough. Let's enhance. If you wanna see what's going on on the other side of a black hole, the most crucial place to look is at this thin ring at its center. This is called the photon orbit. It's a ring made up of light particles called photons that have orbited the black hole two, three, or even more times before escaping. Photons can come closer to the black hole than ordinary matter because they're massless. And the crazy thing is that the photons we see in this ring don't just come from the sides of the black hole, they also come from behind it. This is because the black hole can warp space and time to such a degree that some of the light orbits the black hole in a full circle. Let me explain. Imagine a star in space that, from our perspective, is obscured by a black hole. The star sends out light in all directions. Some of this light would usually reach our eyes on Earth and some would just disappear in other directions. But in this case, the light that's headed straight for us would get sucked in by the black hole and disappear forever. And some of the light that normally wouldn't have reached us will get redirected by the black hole. This light would become part of the photon orbit and eventually make its way to our eyes on Earth. 
The light appears to come from the gaseous rim around the black hole, but it's coming from behind it. Now, yeah, I know this isn't exactly what you were hoping for when you imagined seeing through a black hole. You want to know what it looks like inside, right? Well, to do that, we would need to travel past the event horizon, which is essentially the edge of a black hole. It's the point from which nothing can escape, not matter or light. So, yeah, we won't be able to report our findings back to Earth, but maybe we just want to see it for ourselves anyway. After we pass the event horizon, we'll arrive at something called a singularity. It can be described as a point in space where mass has infinite density. Everything that goes into a black hole will end up here, including all the light it's sucked up. Because you'll be inside the black hole with the light, you will be able to see it, but its direction will be all mixed up. You would probably just see a uniform glow if you looked away from the singularity, and darkness if you looked towards it. And in true what-if fashion, yeah, that would be the last thing you'd ever see. How much do you know about black holes? What would happen if you fell into one? Say one day you were exploring space looking for a new planet for humans to inhabit, but came across a black hole and decided, eh, why not check it out? 